The war in Afghanistan that began after the U.S. was attacked on September 11, 2001, goes on today. And in this new year, a stark reminder that U.S. troops stationed there are still very much in harm's way. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin reports from the Pentagon on America's longest war and where we go from here. As the Afghan war approaches its 17th year, the body of the latest service member killed in action returned home. Vice President Mike Pence was at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware to greet the remains of Sergeant First Class Mihail Golan, a 34-year-old Latvian immigrant from Fort Lee, New Jersey. Golan was killed on New Year's Day near the Pakistan border in an area not far from where the U.S. dropped the mother of all bombs last year. Eight years earlier, Sergeant Golan served on the same Pakistan border, shown here, manning a tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided missile to track militants crossing the border from safe havens on the other side. Today, the State Department announced it was cutting more than $255 million in security aid to Pakistan, a punishment for its ongoing support for the Taliban. We consider them to be destabilizing the region and also targeting U.S. personnel. The United States will suspend that kind of security security assistance to Pakistan. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis was asked whether he worried Pakistan would close the vital supply lines and border crossing used by the U.S. military into Afghanistan. We have had no indication of anything like that. Since President Trump took office, the number of U.S. troops in Afghanistan has doubled to 16,000. The White House announced a new strategy for Afghanistan in August. We vowed to win this war on our terms, on this soil. The top U.S. commander said he now has more leeway to pursue the Taliban. We've used air power, dropped more munitions this year than any year since uh, 2012. The Taliban now control half of Afghanistan. Brett? Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you.